Hi Church, my name is Lachlan and I just want to say welcome to Life Church. Thank you so much for choosing to spend a part of your week here with us. Are you looking to get connected and stay up to date on all that's happening here at Life Church? If you don't know what's going on, there's a lot to experience and we want to make sure that you're in the loop of every single thing that's going on. And so the easiest way to do that is our website. Our website acts as a hub for all important information and events to keep you best up to date. At LifeCC.com, you can access all of our current and older sermon series, register for Sunday services, you can find out about life groups, serve teams, as well as take note of who we are here at Life Church by checking out our beliefs and mission statement. If this is your first time joining us, you can also fill out the Digital Connect card under the Church Online tab, or even send us through your prayer requests and praise reports through the links provided. We also have an amazing mobile app you can download straight to your phone. Our mobile app is the perfect way to stay connected on the go by listening to sermons as you drive or go for a walk. Easy links for registration and you're the ability to receive notifications to remind you of all that's going on here at Life Church. Download in your mobile app store under Life Church Wellington and set up your personal profile today. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for choosing to spend part of your week here with us at Life Church. We hope you have an amazing day and enjoy the rest of service.
church, while we're here in the presence of the Lord, we want to enter into some time of prayer together. Today's the first time in a long time we're going to have people ready to pray for you. We, we had to take a pause during the beginning of COVID where we actually had people go to other people and have them pray for you. We thought it was appropriate at that point to put a pause on like getting that close to folks, but um, we're, we're ready to go back into seeing God move through prayer together. And so there are people that are on each side of the auditorium and, and they're prepared. They've been through training recently and they're ready to, to pray for whatever needs you have. And so in just a moment, I'm gonna release you to go to them for prayer. And so whatever needs you have, maybe you wanna pray about something going on in your life. Maybe you have a, a student, you have an exam coming up and you're like, Lord, I need all the help I can get for that. Um, maybe you're struggling with what's going on in culture. And you're like, you just need somebody to agree with you in prayer. Uh, so don't miss this opportunity for us to pray for you. And so I'm gonna release you now to go to these people for prayer. And so while they are going for prayer, I'm gonna lead us through some prayers together as a church body. And so don't hesitate to go to them. Uh, so if you need me to say one, two, three, go, then one, two, three, go. Um, and so feel free to get prayer. While they're going, I do want to um, read a, a verse to you and, and kind of talk a little bit about why we pray together. And this is in Acts chapter 4, 23. And it says, when Peter and John were freed and they returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priest and elders had said, when they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voice together in prayer to God, all the believers. And so I think it's important that the church has moments where all the believers pray together. And so obviously I'm leading this prayer, but you can agree in prayer. You can be in prayer as I am praying and all the believers are going to pray together through some things that we're gonna put on the screen. The Bible goes on to say in the same story that after prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And so as a result of the whole church praying, God moved in a powerful way. And we wanna see God move in a powerful way. And so I think it's important that we have a moment in our church where we all pray for a few things. And so the first thing I wanna pray for is in remembrance of 9-11 together. And so this is an opportunity for you to join me in this prayer. And um, one of the things we do is we extend our hands towards the screen just as a way of us uh, putting our attention there, our focus on that. And so feel free to do that. Um, you know, 9-11 for some, has been a very painful remembrance. If, if you were some of those that maybe went to, went to Afghanistan and, and as a result of that, you know, these things bring back memories and, uh, you know, we wanna lift up people, their burdens that are, they're carrying today. Uh, you know, we wanna see our nation turn back to God and sometimes in a moment in national crisis and a remembrance that people turn to God and one of the most important things that can happen as a result is a nation that turns to God again. And so Father, we lift up our nation in this season of where we remember what happened 20 years ago. Father, we ask that you would protect us from evil. God, I ask that you would protect us from the, the terrorism that, that threatens our, our borders, God. Lord, I pray that you would give wisdom to our leaders. And God, I pray for us as a nation, Lord, that we would turn to you, Father, Lord, we pray that people who, who are feeling the, the anxieties of our day would find hope in you. Lord, that you would cause people to turn to the church for hope and answers. And Lord, let us be, let the church be a place where people find real answers to the struggles of life, God. And so Lord, we thank you. We ask that you would use this occasion of 9-11 to turn our hearts to you. I lift up those who have been uh, either in, in you know, the battles and, and war in, in Afghanistan, God, that, that are struggling today. And we ask that you'd comfort them in ways that, that only the Holy Spirit can do. And so, Father, we pray that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Can I get an amen, church? Amen. Amen. Hey, we want to continue to pray in another area in our church. Uh, every week, we invite you to fill out prayer cards. Those prayer cards are out on the table out there and you can drop it in one of the offering buckets on the way out. And we take those prayers and we pray over the different things that are in your life. And so 
Some of these are on the screen today. And so we just want to continue to pray together as a church. So Father, we ask that you would touch the lives of your people that are part of this church body. We pray for those that are working through legal uh, issues, that you would give them wisdom. We pray for restoration in a family, God. We ask for, for wisdom. We ask for people who've had surgery, Lord, that be healed in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, we ask for people who need jobs, they would find it. We ask that you protect people from COVID, Father. And so, Lord, we lift up all these things and we know that you are a miracle working God and we trust you, Lord. We just, pull, we just pull down from heaven to earth all these needs and we believe, God, that you'll hear us answer them in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, one more area, no, two more areas actually. One more area that I wanna bring up though, I'm excited about. Second Mile Church, Pastor Andrew, Adam Mew, sorry, Pastor Adam, they are launching Second Mile Church today in Wilmington. So they're over at the Point Theaters today. They're having their very first church service ever today. And I can only imagine the anticipation and, and the excitement they have. And so, you know, we just want to pray for them together and let God just do something amazing in that church today and pray for the pastor. And it's just amazing to see God growing his kingdom through new churches. And so, Father, we lift up Pastor Adam and Second Mile Church today. We thank you that, Father, you are going to do something remarkable in that house. We thank you, Lord, that that they are a new church in our city. And as another church, we receive them, we lift them and we pray for them. We bless them in the name of Jesus, God. We ask for an abundance of people, people to be saved in their first service. Mark that church on this day for something powerful, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Lord, we thank you for Life Church. Are you thankful for Life Church? Come on, get it together. Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you that you're moving in this house. We thank you for your power and your presence that's here. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.
We're going to continue with our time of worship with our tithes and offerings. How good is that, by the way? Come on. That's so good. Thank you. There are three ways today in which you can give, and you can give through our Life Church app. You can go on our website. And here in person, in the hallways in the back by the door, there's a little offering station there that you can drop it off at. You can also take your Connect cards and put those there as well after service. But I want to read to you guys a verse that kind of encourages us around our giving. This is from Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, and it's on the screens as well. And it says this, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. And so today, let's, let's, I just want you guys to be encouraged. Give your first fruits and watch what God does. And watch what God does with your life in every single area. So Lord, today I just pray over each and every person today who gives. Lord, we just thank you for each and every place that they are even represented in their workplaces that they're going to, Lord, that every place that their foot steps, Lord, that they will be blessed in Jesus' name. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. You guys can have a seat if you would like. Again, worship, you guys were on fire. That was awesome. Thank you guys. Hey, my name is Eli Blevins. I'm on staff here at Life Church, and I just want to say welcome to church this morning. It's an honor that you guys would be here with us, so thank you guys for coming. I got a couple of announcements for you guys, and the first one is Next Steps. So our Next Step class happens every single week from tw- or first three weeks of the month. And you guys can come, you can join at any time. This week is class number two, step number two. And so if you have not been to step number one, that's okay. You can come join us right after second service today for number two. We would love to have you. We would love to get to know a little bit more about your story and for you guys to learn a little bit more about who we are at Life Church and where you can take your next steps with us. So come on and hang out with us today after service at 1245. There'll be lunch there for you guys, but you'll also be able to have a chance to meet some of our staff. And so it'll be a great time to be able to connect with you guys for that. And if you are interested, you can sign up and you are like, I don't know if I want to jump in right in the middle of step two. Well, in October, you can join us for step number one, and it'll be great for that as well. Also, we have baptisms coming up here at Life Church in just two weeks. And so this is an amazing time for our church, an amazing time for you, because this is one of the best decisions that you will be able to make is baptisms. Apart from giving your life to the Lord, baptism is next. And so if you're watching online and you're like, I just, I need to get baptized, come join us in person, get baptized with us on September 26th. So please register and sign up at lifecc.com. We'd love to have you out. And this is gonna be a party. We're gonna have just a blast doing it. If you're not being baptized and you're just 
there watching between services or after services. Let's just celebrate the mess out of it and just celebrate what God is doing through people's lives. And so come on out and join us for that. And then also we have a whole bunch of ministries and a whole bunch of events that also happen that sometimes don't get announced. Like we have got sisterhood and we've got kids life that's always happening and echo that's happening. And we have young adults that's happened. There's just so many things. Sisterhood, we had an amazing sisterhood Tuesday night kickoff. How many of you guys were there for that? I was there, me and Lachlan were holding it down for the, uh, we were holding it down the guys section back there. Um, but it was great just seeing so many women there just worshiping and praying. That was, it was awesome to see. But there's so many things that are happening. So head to our website and our app. There's just amazing resources there for you to see everything that's going on at our church. So go ahead. We all have phones nowadays, so you can get online and go see some stuff for yourself. And so come be a part of what we're doing here at Life Church. It'll be great. But we've got an amazing service that's happening right now. Turn your attention to the screens. Good morning, everybody. So good to see you again. What a great morning. I love our church. I love getting to worship together. And I'm really excited about this series that we're beginning today on the Holy Spirit. And so it's going to be great. If you're a guest today, welcome to church. I want to tell you this. When we talk about the Holy Spirit here, we make it really practical and not weird. So um, you're going to love today's message. You're going to love the whole series. And so uh, I'm excited you're here to be part of it. I love to tell Take the things of the spirit and make them real practical for us to apply them in our lives. And so that's what we're going to do for the next three weeks together. If you're a guest, I want to invite you to our next step class. The next step class is how we are able to meet you and you learn about who we are, our vision, our ministries, and how you get involved. Our next step class is held uh, after the second service. And so if you've never been to that class, we'd love to invite you to be a part of that. Amen, church. Amen. Well, let me pray and we're going to jump into today's message. Father, I thank you for the church that's here. I thank you that your presence is here. Holy Spirit, as we talk about you, I ask that you would flow through me so that the words that I speak would be your words, not just my words, Father. And so we ask that you would break down any strongholds that come against this word. We ask that you would change an atmosphere in this room to where it's easy to receive from you today. And so, Lord, we love you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Well, today's sermon title is the Holy Spirit in you. Next week, when you come back, because you'll be here next week, I know you will, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit on you. And then the following week, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit working through you. So it's on you. I'm sorry. It's in you, on you, through you. And that's where we're going to be in this series. And I really want to teach this series because I think it's like so important to us as believers to understand how the power of the Holy Spirit helps us to live a dynamic life for Him. Now, can you live your Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes, you can. It's just going to be a lot harder. And so what I want to do is to make your Christian life easier because the power of the Holy Spirit is working in your life. And so we took the series out of the book of Acts chapter 1, 8. If you're ever wanting to study more about the Holy Spirit, you can read the book of Acts. It's a great uh, book on the Holy Spirit. But Acts 1, 8 says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You, you, this is written to you. It was written 2000 years ago, but it's written for us today. The Holy Spirit is for today. This isn't just something for the original apostles. The Holy Spirit is for you today. His power is in you. If you believe in Jesus as your savior, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And so I wanna get started today in the book of Acts and look at Acts chapter one, verses one and two. And it is written by Luke. Acts is written by Luke. And Luke says, in my first book, I told you Theophilus. Now, uh, what Luke is saying is, is I wrote the gospel of Luke. And he said, I told you some things in the gospel of Luke. 
And he said, now I'm writing the book of Acts. So he said, my first book, I told you, Theophilus, what did he tell him in the book of Luke? He said, I told you about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions by the Holy Spirit. So Luke wrote the gospel of Luke. He told them, he told us everything we read is about everything that Jesus began to do and teach. The book of Acts is about everything that the Holy Spirit is continuing to do and teach. The book of Acts is the only book in the Bible that's not complete. And the reason it's not complete is because the Holy Spirit is still at work. He's still on the move and he is still continuing to teach and move in our culture today. And so he is continuing to move. Now, how will Jesus continue his work on earth? Check it out on the screen. Jesus is continuing his work on earth through us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The book of Acts could be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit because it's a whole book about how the Holy Spirit moves on the earth today. The Holy Spirit is God on earth. You know, when we read the book of Luke, we read about Jesus on earth. You read about the book of Acts and it's the Holy Spirit being God at work in the earth today. And he empowers us. He, he puts his spirit in us and he empowers us to live our Christian life and to be able to live out the purpose of God in our life. And listen, church, if you and I are not proficient and if we are not competent about the Holy Spirit and his work in us, then we won't be able to practically live out our Christian life and to live out the purpose of God, our God-given purpose at the level that God wants us to. Like we need to have instructions about the Holy Spirit. We cannot just assume that, that the Holy Spirit being in us, everything's gonna click without some teaching. We need to be taught, I, we all need, we need to be reminded and refreshed about the Holy Spirit in our life. We need to actually know more about the Holy Spirit. Because when you read the book of Acts, it mentions the Holy Spirit 57 times because he's so, he's so practical and he's so part of the lives of those early disciples. And it should be our life the same way. He should be actively talking and moving in our life in the same way. When you read through the book of Acts, you'll see things like it says that the Spirit filled them. In the book of Acts, it'll say the Spirit came upon them. When you read the book of Acts, it'll say the Spirit said to them, and so he's speaking to them. When you read through the book of Acts, it'll say the Spirit sent them out. It says that the Spirit led them. The Spirit spoke to them. In other words, the Spirit was act, absolutely active in the life of the disciples. And I feel too often in my life, and I'm going to make an assumption in your life, that we, we relegate our life to what we can do and not what the Holy Spirit can do through us too often. Because we, we, we just, we lose our, our sensitivity or our awareness of the Holy Spirit inside of us. So if you've been at our church for years and you've heard me talk about the Holy Spirit and you're thinking, well, I've heard all this before. Well, you probably have, but you probably need a reminder because the world is beating against you at such a level that you're going to need more, more of sensitivity to the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life than ever you ever have needed him. Amen. The point of the Holy Spirit is how God is exhibiting his activity on earth today. I mean, that's what the Holy Spirit is. He's, he is God active in our lives today. And one of the hardest things that you can do or I can do is try to live our Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And sadly, too often, Christians try to attempt to live that way. We try to live out of our own strength and just out of, out of self-discipline. And we just, we just think if we, we try harder and we just do a little bit better. And listen, I want you to know that, that your faith was not just about try harder. It's about learning to, to flow and feel and know the Holy Spirit and let him guide your life. Man, that's when it gets free and fresh and alive in your life. When you start responding and feeling his presence inside of you. And that's what I want to do 
in the Spirit is to help you receive the Holy Spirit and be able to learn to walk and be led by Him so that it's a freeing life in Him and not just a, a place of rules and regulations. Listen, I didn't sign up when I gave my life to Christ to a, a set of rules. I, set, I signed up for a relationship to know God and to walk in His presence and to learn and grow and to flow and to, to feel Him leading. Listen, salvation is a supernatural experience of God coming into our life. I don't want to have the supernatural God in my life and live a natural life all the way through. I want the supernatural power of God leading my life and I want him to lead our church as well. The Holy Spirit, this is how God operates on earth today. In Acts chapter one, four and five, a foundational concept to understanding the Holy Spirit today. Acts 1, 4, and 5 says, once when he, this is Jesus, was eating with his disciples. And so this was uh, earlier on towards right at the end of Jesus's life, but earlier on from Acts 1, 4, and 5 says, once when he was eating with them, he commanded them. He said, do not leave Jerusalem until the father sends you the gift that he promised and he says, as I told you before, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus had previously told his disciples that at a certain time he would go back to the Father. And when he goes to the Father, that he would send the Holy Spirit to come and baptize them. He talks about John the Baptist and John the Baptist, he baptized people into Jesus in other words, he did the water baptism. When you give your life to Christ, you're baptized into the life of Jesus. And I love the concept of baptism. And we have baptisms coming up at our church. Did you just announce that, Eli? Thank you. I was in the back. I was praying. I wasn't listening, but thank you. Um, we have baptisms. And, and I love the fact that we immerse people completely underwater because we want to be immersed in the life of Jesus. We want our whole life to be given to Jesus Christ. And like we don't want just part of like we don't want to partially dunk you. You know, like we don't want your hand to still be out. We want every bit of our life to be surrendered to Jesus Christ and we are immersed in water. But also I like the concept here of baptized in the Holy Spirit is we need to be baptized. We need to be completely immersed in the life of the Holy Spirit in our life the same way. And so he said in a few days, you will receive this baptism, be immersed by the Holy Spirit. Now this is a foundational place for the disciples because they had walked with Jesus, they had been with Jesus, and this was the transition for the disciples from where they physically had Jesus' presence with them for him to go to the Father, and now the Holy Spirit was going to fill them. This was a transitional time for them, and when the Holy Spirit baptized them, came upon them, it set a precedent that you and I live in today. We don't actually physically see Jesus today but we receive the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that filled the disciples fills you and I with his presence. And we have the same, the same power that those early disciples had, we have today. That's a good amen moment, church. Thank you. Acts 1.8 says, you shall receive this power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. And so over the next few weeks, we're gonna learn to receive his spirit. I like how Galatians 5 and 16, 18, 25 says, it says that we will walk by the spirit. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be walking by the spirit. We don't walk by the rules. We don't walk by religion. We walk by spirit. Verse 18 says we are led by the spirit. Verse 25 says we live by the spirit. And that then says, let us keep in step with the spirit. And so this, we live a spirit life. And so I'm here to stir up the, the spirit of God inside you. And so I want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he is in you. The book of Romans chapter eight, verse 11 says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And so if you've ever made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, then the moment you said yes to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then His Spirit came alive inside of you. God's Spirit is there. He is inside of you. 
And, and I like to represent this. And if you've been around here before, I like to talk about the Holy Spirit and to remind myself that he's inside of me. I, I put my hand on my chest because like right below my hand is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is right like I'm, I'm the temple that he's in. You're the temple that he's in. Like that same spirit, like that just blows my mind. That ought to like go, what? Like all the power. Listen, the, the same spirit that helped create the heavens and the earth right here. The same spirit that, that parted the Red Sea. It's in you. Like all that same power. Like you read these Old Testament stories and you're like, wow. Well, let me tell you, wow, he's here too. Like we didn't get like a deluded Holy Spirit. Like over 2000 plus years, the Holy Spirit didn't get weaker and weaker and weaker. And we finally get this little, you know, feeble representation of God inside of us. The same spirit that, that caused the walls to fall down in Jericho like that same spirit lives in you. The same spirit that, that caused the sun to stand still is inside of you. Like that ought, that's just like amazing to me. The same spirit that raised Lazarus to life, from death to life, is in me and you. Like, wow, the, the potential, the full potential of God is inside of us. So when you hear this kind of stuff, like, like we, we ought to be hearing that, that this isn't a, a, a baby Holy Spirit in us. This isn't a junior Holy Spirit in us. This is the, the full version of God. Like this is, I, I don't know what, you know, like in your computer and you get updates, you know, like you have the full version of God inside of you. You aren't walking around with less than, you're walking around with more than inside of you. That's why you can stand on the promises of God. Like you can believe it with all your heart and mind because the promise of the Holy Spirit is in you. You can say, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe that what you said to me will come to pass. You can stand on that. The same spirit is inside of you. That's why you can overcome the attacks of the enemy in your life. Listen, you can overcome. You are not destined to be defeated by the enemy in your life. You have been born again and you have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. You can overcome anything that comes into your life because his power is in you. That's why you can believe that all things are possible for those who believe. Like you ought to walk around with like your, your shoulders back and, and I don't, may, maybe even a little bit of a strut along the way because you know inside of you, you have everything you need. You can walk into work and you can say, I have the knowledge of Christ. You can walk into work and say, listen, the Holy Spirit's gonna give me a word of knowledge about this business deal I need to make. You can go anywhere knowing you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, guiding you, leading you, talking to you, speaking to you. You have everything. Listen, we ought to charge the world and we ought to charge our workplaces and our schools with, with the power of God inside of us. And that's what we have. Rather than walking around like, oh, the world's falling apart. Oh, I'm worried, 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 worried. Well, there's something to pray about, but we don't have to live defeated in it. You can pray for miracles and you can pray in your spirit language and you can, you can have faith for our nation. Our world needs a church that is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Our world needs a representation of what it looks like to see God on the move. Our world needs to see an authentic move of God and he starts by moving through you and I. So often I think that we think that when we pray for God to do something, that God's going to do something without us. Let me tell you, every time you pray for God to do something, he says, all right, let's go to work. Like he turns that around on us. And too often Christians are like, oh, I didn't know you meant for me to go. I meant for someone else to go do it all. I meant for God, you just to do it on your own. You go be God, you know, like you, you know, you drop the lightning bolt, you do it. You know, I mean, like this is your job. 
And he's like, no, no. The reason you're filled with the Holy Spirit is so that you can do God's job on earth. That's your role. That's what we're here for. When we pray together as a church, we're not merely lifting up good thoughts and good vibes for a broken world. You know, like we're not like, you know, thinking of you. Have you ever had someone say that to you? You know, you're, you, you ask for some prayer or something. Like, hey, we're thinking of you. I'm like, well, don't think about me. Well, that doesn't help me. Like, like go to the throne room and, you know, pull on the power of the Holy Spirit and pray in your spirit language, you know, like, you know, get your spirit power going. Like, that's what I'm looking for. I want those kind of friends. I want to be that kind of a church. Amen. Amen. Now in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit came upon the believers, this was a fulfillment of promise. Now, Jesus had previously told his disciples and, and I want you just to kind of picture yourself as one of the disciples for a few minutes because they had been with Jesus now for three years and they had left their families and their businesses and their homes. And, and I mean, they'd left everything to, to follow Jesus. They dedicated their lives to follow him and assist him in the ministry. And so towards the end of Jesus's earthly ministry life, he begins to tell them that he will soon be crucified, died, resurrected, resurrected. But then he says, but I'm going to go be with the father. And so can you imagine these disciples who hear this like, hey, we've given our whole life to follow you around. We thought like this was a, a lifelong journey. You know, I think they were like, I thought we were going to get old together. I thought we were going to watch you do all this amazing stuff. Listen, those disciples are probably like me and you because we're all like, we thought God was going to do all the work. It was a plan for him to teach them how to do the work. And he said, I'm going to leave and then I'm going to send the, the Holy Spirit to be in you. So you go do the work. And so it was a, a setup. Listen, you and I have been set up the same way. Like he's going to fill you so that you can fulfill the great commission here on earth. Can you picture these guys when Jesus said to them, I'm going to leave you. He said, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. I, I can only imagine them when he said, but you're going to face persecution. He's like, and the world's probably going to hate you along the way. I know they're like, hang on, did we sign up for all this? Did, did we sign up for that? I thought like, you know, we were going to have campfires and sing Kumbaya together a lot. Like I, that's what I was signing up for. We love watching you cast out demons. Good job, Jesus. I mean, they were cheering him on like, go get it, man. You're amazing, Jesus. We worship you, you know I mean? They, and he's like, yeah, oh, that's going to be your job. And I think they were like confused. They were probably bewildered. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, like, just put yourself there. I would be. So Jesus explains to them, and we find in John chapter 14, 15, and 16, we're not going to read all three chapters to you, but I'll summarize it. He says to them that I'm going away, and he says, don't be worried or troubled. That's what he's telling them. Don't be worried or troubled. And I think they were like, okay. I mean, you know, that's like me saying to y'all, like right now, don't be worried and troubled about America. You're like, Really? Okay. He's telling them, don't be worried or troubled. And he said, but I'm sending the Holy Spirit to be your helper. He's going to help you through this. He's going to help you do the ministry. He's going to help you live your life. He's going to help you. And all through the book of John, he refers to the Holy Spirit as our helper. Let me read some verses to you. John 14, 16. Jesus says, I will pray to the Father and he will give you another helper he will abide with you forever. So he said to them, I'm leaving, but the Holy Spirit, he will abide with you. He will be with you all the way through. John 14, 17 says the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit whom the world cannot receive because it neither, neither sees him or knows him. And so the world doesn't have the advantage of the Holy Spirit alive inside of them. They don't, they don't know God. They don't believe in God. They, they're like, well, I don't see God, so I'm not going to believe in God. And so, so they're limited in that capacity. But he says to the disciples and he's saying to us, he says, he says to them, but you know him. Like we know Jesus as our savior. So we know the Holy Spirit. And it says, for he dwells with you and he will be in you. And so the Holy Spirit is inside of you. John 14, 26 says the helper 
The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and he'll bring to remembrance all the things that I said to you. So I'm sure they were like, how are we going to remember everything you've said and done? How are we going to do all this? How are we going to live our life? I mean, you have, you have aided us all the way. I mean, every time we had a need, we just said, Jesus, what do you think? Every time we needed a word from God, we said, Jesus, talk to us. Every time we had any sickness or illness, I mean, one thing is I never read about the disciples being sick. I guess just, just being in his presence all the time, it just, they didn't have to deal with that. Or maybe they were, they didn't write about it. He just healed them quickly. Like it was a short lived thing, you know, like they caught, they caught the virus and he healed it like that. I mean, I guess that's how it worked, but the helper, the helper. John 15, 26 says, when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the father spirit, who of truth, who proceeds from the father and he will testify me, the helper, the Holy Spirit's our helper. John 16, 7 says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And so the helper, Jesus guided them. Jesus comforted them. Jesus taught them. He did the ministry for them. And now he introduces them to the Holy Spirit as their helper as their helper. And let me tell you, I need all the help I can get. How about you? Like we need the help of the Holy Spirit. Hey, four ways I believe the Holy Spirit can help us today. And I want to share these with you. One is the Holy Spirit helps comfort us. So throughout the book of John, if you, if you were to look at other versions of the word um, Holy Spirit, often it would come up with different languages and, and, and different descriptions. And one of those descriptions is it calls the Holy Spirit our comforter and he is our comforter. And so what does that mean? It means that, that the Holy Spirit builds up our inner man. Like this is where he comforts us from the inside. He strengthens us at our soul level. Uh, this is where we, we, we are able to lean into the Holy Spirit through through the, the chaos of our world and find peace in this season of life, the Holy Spirit. This is where I often pray in my spirit language, in my, in my holy language of the Holy Spirit because it strengthens me. He prays for me ways that I don't know how to pray. The Holy Spirit comforts us. We know that from the inside, the Holy Spirit loves to bring us the, the fruits of the Spirit. And we learn about the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 23. And it says that from the Holy Spirit, we have love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. I, I haven't seen that part of the Spirit a lot lately in myself because I, I tend to be worked up. But the fruit of the Spirit, I think about all that's happening right now in our world and the Holy Spirit has the power to give me peace in unpeaceful times. That's the, that's the promise of the Spirit inside of us that we can be in peace through this, this season. And right now there's so much fear everywhere. Do you know what is not of the Spirit of God? Fear. Fear is not of the Spirit of God. And people are, are living in so much fear right now that it's dominating their lives. And, and listen, we, we don't need to fear a virus. Listen, we need to be smart. Fear doesn't mean we're ignorant and we do stupid things. Um, but, but we don't need to live in fear of a, a virus. And, and we don't need to live in fear of, of using our voice in, in culture today for the kingdom of God. Um, we don't need to be in fear of, of things going on. But on the other hand, we can't let our anger cause us to sin either. We can't let our anger turn to hate. We can't let those things begin to, to dominate our thought life and, and our response because, because in Ephesians 4.26, it, it, it says, be angry and sin not. In other words, we can't let our anger begin to control us to where we begin to hate on everybody. And we respond to people out of, out of a fleshly spirit rather than a holy spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is inside of us, then we can ask him to help us to respond to culture. Listen, I'm just to be frank with you. I'm a little angry too right now. 
I am. I, I feel the same thing many of you feel right now, but I don't want my anger to cause me to sin. I, I don't want my frustration over many of the current issues drive me into losing my self-control and losing my peace in, in this day and losing my witness for a hurting world. I don't want to lose those things. There's higher priorities in my life. And I have the Holy Spirit and I'm continually asking the Holy Spirit to help me in this area right now more than ever. But he promised me he would and he is if I would let him. And I'm just going to take a little sidebar if I can. And I can. Um. <laughs> While I'm here, I've been asked several times recently about some of my stances on current issues. And, um, and, and I thought this might be appropriate because out of a right spirit, out of a spirit of peace, a spirit of love, while I'm right now really controlled by the Holy Spirit, it's a good time to talk about it. Um, catch me later when I'm on social media, maybe not, you know. So, so right now is my best time to talk about some of these things. Um, but I, I just want to say I've been asked about things from masking to vaccines and those things. And, and here's just a, a, a simple place for me is I am not an anti-mask or anti-vaccine person. I am a pro-freedom of choice person, though. Um, and that's where I am. And that's why you can come to church here and you have the freedom to wear a mask or not wear a mask. And, and there's no division with us. Um, so like that's, that's where I get frustrated at, at, at the current political push right now that has, has politicized things to the point to where there's so much misinformation out there that it's really hard to even make a good decision on whether I should get a vaccine or not because, I mean, you can't believe anything. You can't believe anything. I can't believe what the government's telling me. I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed at some of what I read from our hospital yesterday. Um, you know, listen, and we have some amazing doctors in our church. I love you guys. And I talk to them. I'm like, you give me, cause I can get good information from my, my Christian doctors and, and they help me a lot. Praise God. We can get some good information, but I think it would be foolish of me to make broad statements about a vaccine in ways that I really haven't been to medical school and researched and dug it all out. And I'm pretty convinced of this, that, that, the, um, that the, the extent of the virus is probably not near as bad as the government has told us. And I'm convinced of this, that it's probably a lot worse than a lot of the people on the far right are telling me. Now that, oh, you got quiet. You're like, oh. <laughs> clack, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love to trick you every now and then. It's so fun. Hey, listen, jump into another topic. I want you to know I'm pro-life and I am angry that our current president is using the authority and the power of our government to fight against the state of Texas that just passed a heartbeat law. Like, like uh, that's so unfair. That is so wrong. And, and so I can be angry without sinning though. So rather than me, me jumping on everything and cursing our president, because the Bible still tells me I have to honor, I have to honor. So, so I'm praying though, that God would turn his, his heart and God would turn his attention and God would put some people around him that would turn his heart to see what righteousness really looks like. I'm broken hearted for how our current administration has left Americans in Afghanistan. Like, I'm, like I, I, it just destroys me to think about that. And, and Christians in Afghanistan now under a, a extreme Islamic group and, and I mean, real persecution. You and I, we don't know persecution. You know, we, we, we feel persecuted because they made me, you know, like behave in some certain way just to go into Lowe's. <laughs> well, bless our hearts in Afghanistan. They're, they're looking at your phone to see if you have a Bible app. And if so, they cut your head off. So yeah, that bothers me. So how do we respond to this? Holy Spirit, would you help me? Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm at loss at times. 
Would you help me pray, Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, would you help me to have a voice without, without alienating everyone that needs to hear about Jesus? No, those are, those are walking some tight rope balances, but it's possible. I believe the church should have a voice in culture, but I think in some fashion, some way, it ought to draw culture to Christ when it's all said and done. All of these have the potential, these areas have the potential to move me and you away from a spirit controlled life into a self directed life. And that's the problem with when we allow the circumstances to drive us, we, we forget that we have this Holy Spirit inside of us and, and we just get into our, our mode. We get into our, our, our fit of, of rage or we get into our, our space. And, and before you know it, we're like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble with all the stuff I'm saying and thinking and feeling and I'm depressed and I'm angry. Like it gets out of control. And so you need to have a reminder today that the Holy Spirit is inside of you and he wants to bring you the fruits of all the fruits of the spirit into your life. Amen. Okay. Back to the message. Amen. The Holy Spirit helps guide us. He helps guide us. He speaks to us. There's promptings and he leads you by his voice inside of you. I love that. One of the favorite things I ever experienced from God is when I, I sense him like drop someone's name into my mind and I think, Oh, I need to pray for that friend or text that friend, or, or encourage that person. And God does that a lot when I'm praying, but now I'm intentional about it. I'll say, now listen, I don't leave it up to random. I'll say, God, would you give me somebody to pray for? Like, you know, sometimes our walk with God is so much easier than we make it. You know, because we're like walking along thinking God's going to come slam us with some thought and go, hey, don't forget to pray for whip today. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, sometimes, that, but it works a lot better. And I say, Lord, who would you like me to pray for today? And every time he gives me somebody and so, but he'll prompt us, he'll guide us. He helps us make decisions on what school to go to. And, and he, he, you know, reveals to us people to share Christ with. Uh, he protects us because he speaks to us. The other day I opened up my Facebook page and there was this request from some, some little girl and, and, and the Holy Spirit said, don't open that. Y'all get those two or yeah, somehow. I mean, but, but I mean, I'm like, don't open that. I mean, like, I mean, the Holy Spirit speaks to us about that stuff. Number three, the Holy Spirit transforms us. He cautions us about sin. I mean, I don't know if you've never, if you haven't ever felt the Holy Spirit say, don't do that. I mean, you're not paying attention. He's trying to help you. He reminds us about righteousness. He illuminates God's word to us. He helps transform us. The Holy Spirit is inside of us and he talks to us. It's so beautiful. He's the one that, that leads us. You know, your ways that you need to grow are different than the ways that I need to grow. And so often the Holy Spirit will begin to work in areas of your life that he's not working in my life. And that doesn't mean that you and I are, are different in how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. It just means that the Holy Spirit has something in your life he wants to work on. And something in my life he wants to work on. And so he transforms us. And last, the Holy Spirit empowers us. Supernatural power for ministry. He empowers us. He empowers us. We, we are able to pray like we did today for miracles and for healings. And, and the Holy Spirit allows us to prophesy and to, to speak to, to the future that God has for us. And so he empowers us. Uh, we'll spend more time on that next week. But just to let you know, Zechariah chapter four, six says, it's not by my might nor power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So it's not by the Tim's might and power, but it's the spirit of God that, that leads us and empowers us to do all that we need to do. Amen, church. So all of this help is available to us by the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And I think we just forget about the Holy Spirit too often in our day-to-day -day life. And I think we, we just, we neglect him in our life and we don't rely on him because it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, you know, and I think we just, we, we just need a reminder. And today the biggest thing I'm doing for a lot of you is just reminding you that the Holy Spirit wants to, to be your helper in life. He wants to help you in every area of life. And so my suggestion to you today is to start to ask 
the Holy Spirit to help you. Uh, last week, um, I was after church, I asked a friend, I said, hey, can I help you with that? And, and they replied, no, thanks. I've got it. And so I said, OK, cool. And I, I left. And I think too often we do that with the Holy Spirit. He's like, can I help you with that? And you're like, no, I got it. And he's like, all right, let's see how you do. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, I mean, I think he's polite. He's like, well, if you don't want it. And so here's what I want to encourage you to do. You look on the screen. I've, I've got it with like this, um, that you can start saying this to yourself. Holy Spirit, will you help me? And so whatever you're going into, ask him. He wants to help you. Like make this real practical today. Holy Spirit, will you help me have peace today? Holy Spirit, will you help me have self-control today? Ask him. Like say it out loud though. Like you're talking to your friend or your spouse. Because he's your, your friend. He wants to help you. Holy Spirit, will you help me succeed in this meeting? Like maybe you're, you've got a sales call this week. And you're like, Holy Spirit, will you give me a, 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 a really unique way to, to make this sale? Holy Spirit, will you help me? Holy Spirit, will you help me? Will you help me have faith today for a miracle that I need today? So start involving the Holy Spirit and invite him into your everyday life because that's where the Holy Spirit is. He's supernatural, but he's so normal that he wants to be part of your natural life if you'll invite him in and ask him to help you. Amen, church? Amen, amen. Awesome. Well, listen, I want to close today with an invitation for anyone who doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So the Holy Spirit wants to live inside of you. He wants to be alive inside of you, but it's only for those who know Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so on the screen, I want to share this with you that, that I want everyone to know that you are loved by God. Whether you have made a decision to follow Christ or not, He loves you and He always will love. You can't get away from that love. So you can run from God all you want. He'll love you, love you, love you. All of us have this sin disease. It's, it's for, we all have sinned and it's sin that separates us from God. And so if you've never had your sins forgiven through Jesus Christ, then, then that stands as your, your separator from God. Jesus died on the cross to, to be the, the payment for that sin. He takes away the sins of the world. He takes away your sins. When you believe in Jesus, you ask him to forgive your sins. He forgives all of your sins. And that's what then brings us to where we can have a relationship with our heavenly father. And then his spirit comes alive inside of you. Our job is to accept this gift of eternal life by faith. And so if you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity. And so would you just politely bow your heads and just let me have a moment with you. This is you and your pastor for this moment. Is there anyone here that say, Pastor Tim, I want to pray a prayer to have all my sins forgiven so that I can have a brand new life in a relationship with God. Is there anyone that wants to be saved today? Would you raise your hand to me real high? I would love to see your hand. Is there anybody here today? Awesome, no hands, no hands. Awesome, you can look up. Lord, we thank you for this day. I thank you for this church. Lord, I pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to be more alive inside of us. Give us a new, fresh awareness. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Amen, amen, amen. amen. How good was that today, guys? So good, so good. And if, I'm even gonna take a little bit of a sidebar here. I'm such a visual learner. And I just wanna say, Bailey, your graphics for this series and for the last couple ones have been, like, it just helps so much. I am such a visual person. So shout out to Bailey, you're awesome for that. And sorry, I just get to celebrate people from time to time. That's like, he gets to take a sidebar, I get to take a sidebar too, so. But church, thank you so much for being here today. If you're someone who um, wants to learn a little bit more about Jesus or you wanna take your next step, you can go out into the lobby. We have a Following Jesus book for you in a New Believer's Bible. If you're someone today who says, I just wanna, I wanna learn a little bit more about who Jesus is, you can go right out there today into the Welcome Home Center and they'll give you a free resource for that. And also, right outside in the lobby, you notice that we do not have our Connect cards at our seats anymore. So they are not there. They're located right outside the doors in the lobby. If you're someone who is a first time guest today, 
we encourage you guys to take one of those Connect cards, take it to our welcome home table, and they'd love to be able to introduce themselves to you and give you a free gift. And also on the back of those uh, Connect cards is a place for your prayers and praises. And so we'd like to stand with you, just like we prayed with you on the side. We also like to pray corporately and as a staff together for your needs. So take one of those Connect cards, write your prayer out on there, or maybe it's a celebration of praise that you have. Write that on there so that we can know as well. There's also online versions available for you too. If you go to our website, there's an online Connect card for you guys as well on there as well. But church, have an amazing day. Today's a great day. The NFL starts today. So go watch some football and have a great Sunday. <laughs>